Hi everybody, Jonathan Zelkin here, board certified plastic surgeon in Newport Beach, California, here today to bridge the gap between the understanding of the user community here at YouTube and plastic surgeons. A lot of times you can't really get what you want if you don't know what to ask for. And even amongst doctors, there's a lot of like confusion or loss of clarity or misunderstanding between terms that we use to describe features of facial aging. And hopefully this video will allow me to sort of clarify a lot of these funny terms that you hear in doctor's offices and make sure that when you want to Google something or you know try and find a cure for something, you sound maybe a little bit more sophisticated and that gap is bridged between you and your healthcare provider. So uh, this whole topic sort of arose when I was a resident in plastic surgery and I did not really know what a nasojugal groove was. And even to this date, I always call marionette lines melolabial folds and I call th these lines that people call smile lines, I call them nasolabial folds. It's almost become a little bit of a habit for me so I understand what I'm talking about. But all too often people are like, I don't know what these wrinkles are called here. Uh, and when, even when you're going to like uh, courses on injectables and things like that, the provider uses terms that I haven't even heard of as a plastic surgeon. So I want to talk about maybe a little bit of a lesson of anatomy, maybe a little bit of a lesson in, in Latin, and help define a few folds that are commonly uh, pr identified as problems for patients young and old. So I found a, uh, a Creative Commons uh, free licensable uh, photo of an old man, a generic old man. It happens to be a beautiful photo standing uh, in uh, what appears to be snow. Uh, and his face is very, uh, it's got a lot of character to it. it. It shows a lot of expression, a lot of wisdom. And people who are not a fan of facial rejuvenation say that when you try to eliminate these shadows, you are eliminating some degree of character and individuality. I do think there's truth to it, but it doesn't change the fact that it bothers some people. And a lot of these things can be improved, maybe not fixed, but improved with certain uh, non-surgical and surgical technologies. So let's just start with the lower central face. Maybe since the COVID pandemic and this so-called Zoom boom, we've heard a lot of people who look at themselves in, in videos really concerned about this area in particular. Historically, we've treated the eyes and above with Botox and things like that with some degree of success, but this perioral region continues to be an issue, especially when you see yourself talk. Um, and so let's, let's, let's start by uh, talking about anatomy. It's pretty obvious to everybody that this is the nose, this is the cheek, this is the chin, and these are the lips. So in Latin, lips are labia, like, just like the vagina, labia minora, labia majora. This is labial everything. Everything around the mouth is labial if it's pertaining to or around the lips. Milo or jugal refers to cheek. So anything milo or jugal is the cheek. The nose is nasal, nasal, nasale, nasal, naso, uh, and the chin is the menton. So anything from the lip to the chin, for example, will be labiomental. So this crease, for example, is a crease between your lip and your chin. It is a mental labial or labiomental crease. The neck to the chin, for example, would be cervicomental. Cervical meaning the neck, menton being the chin. Cervicomental, labiomental. Now, this line right here, I've always called it the nasolabial fold. Uh, more recently, I heard another provider calling it the melolabial fold, and I, and I always thought that melolabial fold was down here, but the truth is, this curve spans from the nose all the way down to the chin, and the point of fixation is the corner of the lip. So this whole parenthesis is the melolabial fold. Not this, not this but all of this. So how do we specify this? A very common colloquial term is marionette lines. Most people and providers know what you're talking about when you talk about marionette lines. But this is technically the lower melolabial fold. People talk about melomental fold. I don't think that's as accurate. I think lower melolabial fold or marionette line is the best way to describe and identify your concern here. Some people say that the nasolabial fold really technically should be this crease between the nose and the lip. 
but this is commonly called the nasolabial fold, or you can call it the upper melolabial fold. It's also called the nasojugal gre crease, not grease, crease, because this is the nose and this is the jugal region. This is the nasojugal crease. So you can call it a smile line, but technically everything on this guy's face when he smiles is a smile line. So to be more specific, you call it a nasolabial fold or a nasojugal fold and crease behind it. This will be the melolabial fold starting at the nose and going down to the chin. Specifically, if you want this area improved, and a lot of people do, we call it a marionette line or a lower melolabial fold. I probably made this more confusing for you. I'm gonna put a summary slide to point out what I would identify these areas specifically as, as they become hotter topics and more confusion arises at what we call these specific lines. So let's start with a review of the anatomy followed by terminology that pertains to facial folds, creases, and shadows. So the cheek is also known as the Milo region. Milo from the Latin melon or extremity. Jugal is, uh, pertains to the cheek, anything that pertains to the cheek. Milo is usually a prefix, jugal is usually a suffix. When it comes to the lips, it's either labio something, if it's the prefix, or something labial, if it's the suffix. And when you're talking about interfaces, uh, you can exchange it both ways. Whichever term comes first is up to you. The chin is anything pertaining to the menton. So it's mento something or something mental. Not like mento, but mental meaning of or pertaining to the chin. As far as the nose, it's naso something or something nasal from nasale, uh, which means nose. So when you're talking about interfaces between these structures, you can choose whichever prefix or suffix you want. Both are perfectly accurate anatomically. Let's talk about this crease. It's between the cheek and the lips technically, uh, and that's the melolabial crease. Melo meaning cheek, labial meaning lips. Similarly, uh, the lower part of it could either be the lower melolabial fold or the melomental, you may hear sometimes. But I typically call it the marionette lines, and people normally know what I'm talking about. As far as this crease here, a lot of people call this the smile line, but every crease in your face that forms when you smile is a smile line. So this is the nasojugal between the nose and the cheek, or the nasolabial crease. Nasolabial is technically less accurate, but it is more commonly accepted. Similarly, the mentolabial crease or labiomental crease, depending on which order you choose, is a shadow that forms with smiling between the lower lip and chin. I hope this helps and clarifies a lot of confusion. It'll certainly allow you to sound more sophisticated and communicate more clearly. I hope this helps. If you like this video and you wanna see more videos like this, certainly you may comment below, subscribe, all the above. And thank you so much for helping me approach 6,000 subscribers. It means the world to me. Bye guys.